I reversed, we, the, I reversed we, the call. It is not a touchdown. Exactly. <laughs> At least you have any doubt where I come on that one. We, uh, we can muddle through with substitutions, but it's better to have the real thing. Appreciate that. I apologize for being late. Welcome. Welcome, Steve. Thank you. Good to have all of the seats filled. So it is now, <coughs> I have to look for the clock, it's now about 17 minutes to 8, and I guess we're back, going to start done discussing the Riverway condominiums and 60 New Driftway. Why don't you step up and introduce yourself and uh, tell, tell us where we are with your plans. Yes, my name is uh, Anthony Donano, and um, good evening, board members. And I represent the Donano family on 60 New Driftway, the Riverway condominiums. And I'd also like to introduce uh, part of our team uh, is John Gregorio, and he's been working very closely with the building department and uh, moving the project forward. Um, I'm here tonight to answer questions uh, that date back to June 19th um, to kind of move forward on the uh, special permit and any outstanding conditions. Okay, and um, as you board members are aware, I, I'm not sure if you've all been on the board at the uh, inception of the project. Is it all the same board members? Or no, I think it's Bill's. I think I'm it. Bill's okay. the only one. <laughs> all, right. all right, so yeah, the project's been ongoing for about four years now, four and a half years. We're on our final phase, uh, which is building D, six units. Uh, the construction of that building is substantially complete. Uh, which leaves us with the final phase of construction, which is the mixed-use building. Um, for any new members, the mixed-use building um, will be uh, an improvement on the site at the beginning of the site, uh, the entryway, and it will consist of uh, two affordable housing units for the town situate, as well as a commercial use on the first floor level. And uh, I think it, it probably is one of the most outstanding issues of the special permit. And I'm sure this board is wondering when construction will start. Um, due to the economic conditions over the last several years, uh, we looked at the commercial entity as one of the last uh, improvements for the site. Uh, there hasn't been a lot of demand for commercial um, but we will follow through with our obligations to improve uh, that particular piece of the property. Um, what I'd like the board to consider um, is a start date not to exceed um, July 1st of next year and a delivery to this town of Situate uh, on or about December or January uh, thereafter. So that would be 2014, correct? That's right. No later than January of 2014, and no later than a start date of July 1st of uh, 2013. So that's what we're proposing um, for the uh, improvement of that particular uh, stretch of the, of the site. Um, most recently, um, in fact, it's ongoing um, and should be completed by the end of this week is the improvement in landscaping of a walkway to the Clap Cemetery. Um, the project uh, is probably about 75% complete, uh, scheduled for a final completion tomorrow. Uh, Laura was nice enough to meet us out there and review uh, very diligent uh, in representation of this board with her tape measure and, uh, and I think we got a lot of direction on our site visit yesterday. Um, so that's well underway. I've been working very closely with the, um, the cemetery interest, um, more, more, more uh, particular is Annette Markwood and um, apparently she has uh, family that's buried at the Clap Cemetery. Um, and um, one of the concerns Annette had, and it was part of the special permit re relating to the cemetery, um, 
was some improvements for the cemetery, one of which was some uh, chain and post fencing uh, that was proposed for the top portion of the cemetery. And um, we actually went ahead, bought the material, we're about to do the improvement, and there seems to be some misunderstanding maybe between the board and the cemetery, whether that should go forward at this stage in time, or whether the improvement should wait because some of the granite that sits on the top of the wall, this is an elevated cemetery three to four feet out of the ground, is showing signs of pulling away. Um, and I think there might um, be some direction as to how that would be uh, repaired before any additional improvements or before the fencing should go on. So that's probably something that the board, uh, if you don't already know, should, should consider. Uh, and once um, a determination has been made um, by the interest of the cemetery and by this board, uh, we are willing to implement our obligation, uh, whether we improve it with the fencing um, or some other similar type of improvement. Um, there was also a condition for a sign for the Clapp Cemetery. And uh, I have a sketch. Laura, do you have a sketch for the board members at all? Uh, I, I think you sent that to us. We, yeah. we got it through an email. <coughs> We're willing to uh, move forward with, with the sign. Uh, I guess there was a little bit of concern about the dating of the sign. Uh, there's a date, particular date on the sign, and also the location. Um, so once those two issues are resolved, we'll move forward with the sign improvement as well. Um, with regards to the provision of the performance bond to guarantee construction, um, that, that bond is still in place and I took the liberty to talk with uh, the Eagle Bank, which is party to the tripartite agreement, and asked one of the officers at the bank to provide us with a letter uh, indicating that um, the account is still being maintained by the Eagle Bank, um, and um, obviously we need a mutual agreement for that to be released. And I'd like to submit uh, the letter that is dated August 27th from the Eagle Bank. Um, I'd like the board members to know that the original tripartite agreement was executed by the Eagle Bank, uh, executed by us, the developer, but I don't see where the uh, board members ever executed the agreement. Uh, or I never got a copy of an executed of the board's signature. So the board might want to take a look at what you have for documentation. If you do, in fact, have an executed uh, agreement, maybe you can just forward one down to us. Um, so I'd like to submit this letter from the Eagle Bank. Laura, you can put that in with your documentation. And um, one of the last points in the letter that I received was uh, a contract for the first year's inspection uh, and maintenance of the drainage system as well as the septic system as well as uh, maintenance of the landscaping. Um, we most recently um, did a Title V um, for the project. Um, the system is a newer system, as you know, and the shelf life of the Title V is two years. We expired uh, on our original um, application, and we just most recently um, received a new Title V inspection, and we passed. Um, so I'd like to submit the Title V inspection um, for the board's records, as well as uh, our engineer is Kohler and Colin Tanio, and they also provided a letter. Uh, it pretty much talks about uh, an as built and how the system was um, inspected as it was being constructed. 
and, uh, and it meets the uh, compliance of the design that they put forth. So I'd like to submit uh, the engineer's letter as well as a uh, most recent Title V that we did pass uh, that's dated um, August 24th of 12. So Laura, let me leave you with these two documents here. Uh, with regards to uh, the landscaping for the project, we take a lot of pride in what we do down there. I'm not sure if any of the, the board members have driven by. Uh, we have a gentleman, um, he also happens to be a personal friend of mine, Barry Comack of Comack Brothers out of Peabody, Mass. He does not usually travel this kind of distance, but we've been loyal to him and he's loyal to us. And I always say Barry's an artist. Uh, and the, I think the landscaping for the site uh, speaks for itself. As far as the board's concern of uh, maintenance of the landscaping, uh, we have a local contractor uh, that has been on board for a couple of years. Um, I have um, invoices I can submit to the board if you'd like as evidence that we're maintaining the landscaping. And also we have a number of unit owners who are in attendance here tonight that I'm sure will speak very much in favor of any landscape improvements, maintenance uh, of the site, uh, landscaping wise. Um, and one, one additional item on your, your letter here was <coughs> maintenance of the drain, drainage system. And um, we most recently checked the drainage system and there's no sediment inside the basins. Uh, the flow appears to be adequate. Um, it's doing what it's designed to do and there's been no need to require any maintenance. Uh, however, there has been maintenance to the septic system. We're on a regular pumping schedule with a local uh, septic contractor Peter Spencer. Peter Spencer. Um, so we try to stay uh, uh, loyal to the local vendors, um, and Peter's treated us very well. So um, that's my presentation for the board tonight relative to your letter, and I am certainly open to deal with any questions or any uh, concerns that the board might have tonight and uh, also very open to any future meetings that the board may require. Um, we have 26 total permitted units uh, at the site. These are the residential units and uh, as we sit here tonight, there are 20 of the units sold and closed. Um, the majority of them, 19 of them, are owner-occupied units and I would say um, with a lot of confidence that we have a viable uh, community. I think uh, for the most part, everybody is very pleased with, with uh, the living conditions at Riverway. Um, and we take a lot of pride in our presentation of the product. So I will leave um, any of the board uh, to ask me any questions and hopefully I can field them in a positive way. Super, thank you very much. This is a very unique site, and in fact, it has a cemetery. For as long as I've been doing the planning board work, I've not had it dealings with, with a cemetery. And I think as you look through the findings that were with the permit, it ended up that it was heavily influenced by the people that are involved no and, question. Uh, with the cemetery. And, and this board has is, is kind of taken what their requests were uh, that were meted out with the developer. And, and that's, that's how we got to the conclusions on that. But let me ask. Laura, why don't you give us an update because you've... Okay, sure. Um, I had sent a, a letter out to uh, Mr. Donano back in June. Well, the board sent a letter. Um, I, you know, supplied some of the, you know, the assistance for it. But um, in, in the letter that the board sent, um, there were four items that were mentioned. And um, Mr. Donano just kind of you know, ran down the list very, very nicely. Um, the first one was the mixed-use building. I don't know if people have this mm -hmm. letter from them. Mm -hmm. um, so the, the mixed-use building, I think that really um, there's nothing that, that absolutely 
requires that. I mean, I think if, if it's not ever going to be built, um, there would probably need to be a modification of the special permit. But the density is tied to certain, certain things um, that are a little bit unusual, like the amount of public walkway <laughs> and the amount of park area, you know, little mini parks that are within the development because it's a planned development. Um, but it doesn't depend on having the mixed use with the commercial. So, you know, if there was uh, some interest in an agreement with not allowing, you know, not requiring that building, I mean, I think all that would have to happen would be that the special permit would have to be modified. The reason I'm suggesting that is that I know the market hasn't been great for that type of building, and I don't know, you know, what the developer really wants to do there and what the, you know, what everyone else wants. Um, it might be a nice little park area or something that if it were finished, you know, and landscaped, I think it would, it would kind of complete the whole development um, instead of just having this open, you know, space. Mm -hmm. But that's, you know, just a thought. There's a copy um, of the copies in there you need to sign. So, um, so that was, you know, the first, the first item. The cemetery is really, um, you know, kind of an unusual situation. It had um, some um, assessment done by a, a burial, a historic burial expert for the town. Um, and even though it's a private cemetery, it's not owned by the town, so it's, it's a little bit harder to get CPC money to improve it and so on, because it's you know, owned by some group of people that we don't even know who they are. They're the heirs of these families from the 18th century that you know, could be scattered all over the place. Um, but in the plan, they talk about, in this you know, burial assessment, they talk about the walls being a little bit bowed out and um, you know, the need for some repair there. Um, they talk about having some you know, chain and some granite posts and things like that. And uh, you know, when the idea came up about putting the chain on the top, I didn't really see any. This might um, help you out, Laura. This is just yep. a uh, quick right. diagram yep. of um, what is being um, mm -hmm. proposed as the improvement. And that would be set on top of the existing well, retaining we, wall? We is didn't that... want to set it in the granite because it's shifting. Yeah, right. Um, and so the in, in board of the granite? Moving it in. Yeah. Um, and that's a little concern of ours, too. I'm sure there are no, hopefully, no burials along the edge. That's right, yeah, my next um, question. But that's, that's what's being proposed. Yeah, at some point, with the, when they elevated, since after they elevated the cemetery, they created it, somebody decided that the way of maintaining it was to come back up and patch all of the holes and all of the spaces that existed and all of the stonework that, that provided the, the So there's no the weeps. There's so no, in effect, what no happened weeps, is you right? really altered the drainage, and the drainage now comes back out, and you, you, you bowed the walls. I didn't realize right. that right. looking at no, the No, if you look at it, you'll see, sense. but you'll see exactly that, that that's exactly what happened. They came back and they filled all the voids, figuring that was going to solve a problem. And, and it may have solved whatever problem they envisioned, but it, in reality created a bigger problem because now it bowed the walls. There was, there's no natural drainage to, or seepage that could take place for, for right. the water that was that there. Sense. So anyway, the, the uh, burial uh, site historic expert said definitely she didn't like the idea of putting anything up on top because she thought that the walls were a little bit vulnerable and that you know you might kind of wind up with you know pieces of the stone kind of being a little bit less secure than they are now if somebody was up there with equipment and putting these these uh, posts in so that was that was her idea about that um, this uh, the arborvitae or um, cedars have been planted near the cemetery. I think that just happened between today. Right. Today, um, they're they're kind of close. They're about 30 inches away from the wall, mm -hmm. so you know I think maybe we need to kind of think about that a little bit because it's you know if you're trying to maintain what was it a five foot easement or um, for the, for the maintenance, mm -hmm. I think they're just a little close for that. Um, the wall? Probably within three feet. Okay. Yeah. So anyhow, um, 
the walkway is in. It looks nice. Um, I think it needs to be, you know, it's going to be compacted a little bit. Yeah, I have one more day, Laura, and it will be the mulch and the compaction and then the final cleanup. And, uh, but it's certainly uh, well underway and everybody can get an idea of, of uh, what it's going to look like. Yeah, it look, it actually looks, looks very nice. At some point, you got your team has probably seen my car up there, right? <laughs> but I, I, I was unable to make the meeting on Wednesday. I was in Boston most of the day. So I was unable to meet the, your on-site meeting with Laura, but oh, okay. um, but beyond that, I was you know passed by there quite frequently and generally pull in just to see where where you are in, in terms of your project. We seem to have a, a sign design that everybody likes, uh, which is good. It's not a big sign. Um, I think the idea behind the sign was to have something out at the driftway so that people walking by, you know, maybe people walking to the train would just see. You know, oh, there's something back there. Oh, thanks. Um, I think this is the same yeah. thing that you have. Um, so uh, the only thing that's that's a question right now is what date to use, and that's kind of bouncing around because the um, the family that feels uh, this strong connection to the cemetery um, seem to want as old a date as possible. I think they feel that kind of adds to the prestige and the you know um, historic value of the cemetery um, other people want d other <coughs> dates for other reasons so we're working on some kind of a date and there is a situate historic commission and now they're talking about you know what date it should be so you know I think maybe that's another group of people <laughs> I mean not everyone maybe puts stock in in their opinion but um, I think the last anyway. one of the last emails that I saw was that you're talking about circa 1790. Is that what's is that the date? Well, that's the date that that um, Martha Lyon, that the burial expert, recommended. So because she thought that that was, I think, sort of a round number that encompassed all the other numbers, 1792 and 1797. And there's questions about whether it's a smallpox. There were smallpox victims there because there was a smallpox, um, you know, outbreak in situate. Um, <clears throat> so anyway, uh, a lot of questions about that is kind of kind of interesting. Um, Laura, yeah. Um, the one thing I noticed is that it was originally intended there were going to be two signs here. Is that has that changed? Did they just want the sign at the driftway now, or what? Well, the, the sign that we got the design for um, seems like a nice sign for the driftway, and I think there's still some interest in having more of an interpretive sign up by the cemetery um you know, when so you still in the works well i would think so uh -huh. yeah you know if the board wants it i think that was in the original um you know the original conditions um you know and the more that we sort of investigate the more facts start to come out about you know who's in there there's a descendant of the mayflower that's you know that's in that cemetery and you know there are little things you could talk about on a sign like that mm -hmm. it would make it kind of interesting mm -hmm. but i think the concern at least that that i think i had and i think that laura is, is had is is that we wanted to make sure that we were making progress in terms of what was going on and have an understanding of what your plan were and what your time frames were okay. in terms of completing the project. I sure. think that's what, that was the genesis of the letter in June okay. uh, on it. And I, you know, from my standpoint, I think, and Laura, you, you correct me if I'm wrong, but I think we're making, you know, pretty good strides in terms of, you know, wrapping up a lot of the loose ends and, and putting some definition to things that were uncertain. And, yeah, I, I think we, we've hit a lot of things. There, you know, are probably one or two that we still need to do some work on, like this interpretive sign, you know, to get something um, put together on that, um, you know. I, I, uh, I think the obligation of the developer might be one sign, but I told Laura that we'd be willing to work with the town and also the people from the cemetery. Uh, there's a need for two signs. One is an interpretive sign. Um, maybe that goes at the cemetery, and the sign with the date might go out on the line. Um Annette Markwood had some concern about the sign being out near the street to direct people who are looking for historic cemeteries to understand where it is, which made sense. So we are open to put in uh, two signs if need be. I, I only bring that up because, and, and this is my first time 
<laughs> being involved in this, but the, the conditions anticipate two signs. That's why I bring it up. Okay. Okay. Uh, board members, my name is Attorney Michael Laurie, uh, and I represent the Langley family, who are the caretakers of the Clapp Cemetery, uh, who have the uh, easement out there, which went originally with this development. Uh, and uh, what uh, I, I became involved a uh, very short time ago, maybe. So, uh, April, May, June. Uh, Annette Marquardt is the, a descendant of the Claps. Uh, the Clapp family, uh, her mother was Dorothy Clapp. She was also the local historian and on the historical committee here in Situate. She has written uh, many books about it. When uh, she made her daughters promise that they would take care of the Clapp Cemetery because that was their heritage. Uh, and it is true that uh, they came over on the Mayflower and uh, that's how Situate was settled. Um, and that's why Dorothy fought tooth and nail every time about this to maintain that cemetery as a piece of historical uh, attendance to the town of Situate and to the United States uh, coming in. Um, I, I've known uh, the Claps. I've known uh, the Langleys. Uh, her, her dad's husband was the uh, veterans agent here for many, many years. Great, great fellow. They both passed away. And now the girls are taking this mantle. And, and they have been very active in and with this board as well, to saying, okay, we are going to take care of this. Uh, we, uh, I had called Mr. Donano, we met out at the site in August, uh, and that came up from Texas. Uh, and, and this is not a short trip, okay? Uh, this is how involved they are to make sure at their mother's memory and their family, and the Clapp family memory, that it's, it's protected. Um, sometimes they go a little too far, Maybe not, okay? Uh, as far as the date on the, I spoke with Annette this afternoon, uh, and it's been ongoing between <coughs> Annette, myself, Mr. Donato, about things, okay? The, I believe the sign was sort of designed by the Historical Commission or someone in that, you know, so it's in part of the town, okay? The maintenance of the cemetery, because it is not part of the development, it's private of the Clapp family heirs, whoever they may be. The ones we know, uh, the Langley girls, and you know, that, that, that's, and they've taken part in this for a long time. Uh, we met out there with the developer, uh, and I can say tonight that they are in favor of the design of the sign as it is. Uh, Laura uh, uh, related to the, whether it's 1790, 1792, uh, Dot Clapp in her book says it's 1792 because that was the, uh, the three Claps died in the small smallpox of 1792. Now, 1792, 97, it was probably before that was built. But that's a question I'm not going to answer. Uh, I leave it to the historical commission to make that uh, determination. Uh, as far as uh, the cemetery itself and uh, the, uh, what they call the fencing with the chain link around it, uh, we discussed that out on the, uh, the site visit. Uh, and rather than put the granite like in the walls as they discovered, uh, that's not a good idea, okay? Um, if they put it back from the walls with the chain, it's more of a decorative, you know, mantle than anything else. Um, and I, I think I read that it was supposed to be uh, uh, the vinyl coated fence or some, something like that. But it, this is maybe a change, but then again, it's part of the plan, but it's the decision of the clap people. They own it, okay? And 
we want to work in concert with the board. So I, I don't think it's a problem. I just wanted to make you aware of it that, yeah, they are in favor of, you know, the, a, some sort of a, with, with the chain link and everything. And it, it, uh, it made sense, okay? Um, the other thing were the plantings along the walkway coming in. Uh, there's been some ups and downs. Do we put evergreens? Do we put this? I don't have a clue, okay? But I know uh, that was discussed and with your landscaper, they were gonna present a plan, mm -hmm. you know, to the Langleys as well as the town to say, hey, this is what we think will fit in with what we've got already. And what they've got already is really spectacular. It's a great, it's a great development. Uh, I was the inspector for town of Sitchwood for 10, 12 years. So I've seen, I know, I know developments, okay? Um, and this is a particularly good one. Finally, I might add. Uh, the other thing was uh, I had suggested uh, as the walkway goes in, uh, it surrounds some fairly large trees, and some had to come down, but uh, the walkway is designed such a way that it goes amongst the trees, and I thought maybe, as a, you know, preservation, maybe you put in uh, some strapping along those areas. I'm not talking uh, coil strapping, I'm talking just wooden strapping just to hold the bank in and so on and so forth. Uh, we talked about it, we talked, you know, with the, uh, the, uh, the, the head of the project down here with Joe. Um, and, and that's a th something that we should look at. The um, other thing is the, uh, the fence, the plane. One of the things that when we were out there, and I guess this goes back to the original, original plan, it had a uh, handicapped access area onto this walkway. Well, it's way out towards the driftway where it, on the plant. Um, it doesn't make a hell of a lot of sense to me why it's way out there when it should be near the cemetery. Uh, we looked at the grades, whether or not it was a viable thing, or whether it was a good thing. Uh, the Langleys think it's a good thing. It sort of makes more sense. I don't know, I have no idea why we were approving it up there, whether it was an engineering design or what. But if you go out there and look at it, you go, well, okay, so I got somebody in a wheelchair and I got to wheel them 300 feet, or whatever it is, on this, you know, pervious materials when I, I could have went down here and just been right up there. Uh, and I don't know uh, if, if the board is aware of this or, you know, it, we had brought it up with the developer. And he said, well, whatever the, the board says, whatever you want, that's what we're gonna do. But uh, we, uh, the Langley's think that it makes a, a little more sense uh, because the parking down at the cemetery, I believe is reserved for two spaces or handicapped spaces down there. Two of them, Mike. Yeah. It just, it just makes a lot of sense. So the language would like the board to look at that and maybe, I don't know if you have to amend the plan or just do an allowance of that, but uh, to take a look at that because it has, it just has some common sense ramifications to it. Uh, as far as the plantings, uh, I know we had talked about in, in the original permit it has uh, evergreens and this and that and the other thing. Uh, given what their landscape has already done, and uh, I think Annette uh, said that, yeah, we, we should have some evergreens. Well, we're not talking about Christmas trees. She's talking about cone evergreens to break up uh, the things during the winter, you know, have something that's growing rather than something that's gonna come back. Uh, I don't know if that's been discussed with, uh, with, uh, with Laura or anyone. I know we had discussed it and there hasn't been another meeting that I know with the developer, but I, I, I talked to Mr. Nano and he said, yeah, well, we're gonna put in whatever it is within reason. Uh, and uh, the Langley's uh, uh, are comfortable with that. 
Uh, the other thing that I had picked up is that when you go out into the driftway, there is already, I don't know if this was uh, part of the permit process, but there's a driveway, entrance, exit, whatever you want to call it, at the end of this walkway. It's a curb cut. Right? It's a curb yeah. cut. Um, I'm not going to drive. I don't know if it should be there or it shouldn't be there. Maybe it should just be a walk. Uh, I have no comment on that. I just wanted to point it out to the board because if I'm in a wheelchair and I'm going off the end of the walkway, you know, hell, I'll be over at Hoffman's. Uh, <laughs> so that's just another. These are uh, practical commentaries uh, that I have had in my capacity uh, and with the, the Langleys because they are very, very concerned with this. Uh, They've met with the developer, and uh, they are really in concert with them. So that's uh, that's a big step that we haven't had before. Yeah, very much. Very, very much, much so. so. I mean, we've ended up a lot of the discussion, and, and Laura, you've been involved in a lot of it as well as I. Um, this has gone back and forth. You know, this is you know inflexibility in terms of this is this is what we said, this is what we want. But I think when you look at what was there and what was envisioned and what you look at the topography of the land, particularly the slope that goes off to the to the, the right side as you face it, right? I think what was envisioned in terms of definition is very difficult to put on the on the, on the ground. It is. And I know we also talked about moving the, the, the handicap access coming up, uh, moving it closer to the cemetery down down in the area where the main drainage structure was. Yeah, right? exactly. So we're putting it there, which makes a tremendous amount of sense. Uh, on it. So, anyway, thank you for that. But if I have any, if you have any questions, I'm, I'm available as well. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mike. Thanks. Thank you. Questions from from the board? Uh, before we do, it's 20 minutes after eight. Uh, we have an agenda item for 8:15, uh, which is a public hearing. We will do that as soon as we finish the discussion here. Uh, Mr. Chair, I, I have one more issue that Mike touched upon, and I'd like to. Uh, review with the board members. Uh, we are required uh, to provide an easement. Um, and I, I have a plan, a proposed access easement plan uh, for the cemetery, as well as a public access, access easement agreement uh, draft that I would like the board to review. Maybe town council will, will review as well. And we could um, work together and put this in place and implement it. So I'll leave the draft public access, access agreement with Laura as well as the plan. And uh, just one last note, uh, getting back to what Mike said about the handicap, uh, we'd be willing to make a curb cut on the berm curbing that is near the cemetery uh, it's a simple little construction detail, and what Mike is saying makes more sense. It, it would just allow a handicapped person to get out of their vehicle and <coughs> go directly to the cemetery. So you should, probably should keep that um, in mind as an option. And Laura, I'll leave, I'll leave this with you. Okay, the, great. Um, Thank yeah, you. So. Questions from the board? Um, For sure. <clears throat> yeah, I just wanted to say, I, I, well, I, my term post dates, you know, the uh, the approval of all this, so I'm a little, uh, you know, I'll uh, go to um, Bill here for uh, the more information. But, uh, you know, I've walked by there, you know, dozens of times, walked through the whole development. I think it's a great development. Um, so, and the, the sign there is really nice. The landscaping is excellent, so very well done. I think it's a great job. Um, so, uh, you know, I think that you're working with the people with that um, are responsible for the cemetery. I think that's fantastic. Um, I just had a little question maybe about the commercial building. Um, was that something that we have actually, I know we have the plan, but do we have, was there a design of it, a preliminary design, or was it just the square footage? That uh, was there was a design submitted. You might want to check some of the documentations that go back four or five years. It's very consistent with the architecture that you're seeing uh, in the complex now. Uh, the marina building was also an improvement, and that's consistent with the rest of the building. So mm -hmm. it'll all be 
uh, consistent architecture, consistent coloring. Uh, it would very well fit into the area. Okay. Well, I know from my point of view, I know, and, and I don't want to speak for the rest of the board, but I know we've been trying to focus more maybe potential commercial development in the village centers of Greenbush and the harbor and so forth. So I certainly would like to see that component go forward as, uh, you know, as a member of the board. That would be my um, opinion, I guess, or okay. on that. So yeah. that's all. Okay. Um, couple things. I guess on the cemetery, it's nice you're working together and everything, and it seems like that's the best course is to sort of come up with a plan of what you want to do. I mean, everything I'm hearing sounds good. It sounds like an improvement. Um, so, if, you know, you could come back to us at some point with sort of a plan of here's what we want to do. We can talk about modifying the special permit as necessary to do that. Um, it sounds like uh, I'm not sure how, how helpful we can be in that process. I think it's more with the Langleys and kind of getting on the same page sure, with exactly. what you want. Exactly. Right yeah. yeah, and I think if they're satisfied, we likely will be satisfied right. as well. Um, and it sounds like you're doing a nice job of cooperating on that. Um, on the commercial mixed-use building, with the it says it's got two affordable housing units, so that clearly is important to us as well. So I certainly would like to see that move forward. I don't know if based on how much time has gone by, if it's worth another look at the design of that building or if you would want to change anything about it. Um, or if you're happy with the design. Uh, why don't we, on our end, take uh, another look at it, and uh, I'll submit something to Laura just in case you don't have anything in, in the files. Okay. And that, that may be something that we might want to have the Design Review Committee take a look at. They've been very helpful in the past with sure. usually coming up with improvements that everyone's happy with, but that might be worth a look. So right now, you said where you stand right now, you'd be willing to you know, if we got a sort of a date extension or agreement on that, you'd be willing to commence that in July of? Of 2010. I'm not sure if it's an or extension. 13. 13, I, I mean. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm thinking about something else. Yeah, it's um, just sort of. <laughs> um, there was never a date as to when the improvement was to commence. And, and right. I'm not trying to be a stickler about it. No, I, I that's fine. The dates. Yeah. And, and a lot of that is economic driven, too. Sure. You know, that uh, our final phase will be pretty much sold and by nearing and closing and, and we'll be in a position to, to move forward right. with that. And certainly two affordable units uh, for the town of Situate would right. help the cause. It, and what's the bond amount being held? Right um, $50,000. $50,000, $50, okay. So that's the, that's the only real carrot out there, I guess. In what regard? Right now. Um, I mean, that's being held subject to getting everything completed, <coughs> including the, right. the final building, I'm assuming, right? Uh, correct. And, um, you know, we, we've, we've, pre we've performed according to the special permit, and right. uh, we continue to uh, reach common ground and move forward in, for the completion right. of the project. Okay. Um, I guess that's all I really have, just those two items. I think, you know, coming up with a plan for the cemetery work that, you know, everyone's happy with, and that sounds like a great thing. I'm curious, Laura, Laura about looking into more about the, you know, CPA money and if there's a way to, you know, get some help there. It's tough if you can't trace the exact owners and title without doing like a quiet title action or something, you know, land court action to figure that out. The Langley's have been working on that. Okay. And the intent is to turn it over, you know, to the town as a historical site. Yeah. Uh, I, I've done these in the past with a um, good friend, Kathleen Laidlaw, uh, who was so instrumental in protecting the historical sites in situ. Uh, unbelievable lady, and I gotta tell you, I miss her, and I'm sure the town misses her, because she was right on, she didn't, uh, no, no board could, you know, stop her. She was just right, and she did it, and she, and she was right. She was uh, inflexible with a smile. That's right, absolutely. <laughs> Even when I said I was going to put a, a uh, neon blinking arrow at the lighthouse to show the sign, and she almost fell out of her chair. That was a grant <laughs> I had written for the town, by the way. <laughs> but uh, good memories there as well. And this is really the intent, uh, the maintenance of it, you know, prior to that or after that. We hope to get, you know, uh, the garden committee or somebody like that to maintain, you know, what's there. They're just going to put it in and, you know, go away.
because that's not going to help the developer or the residents here. They want to have a nice looking place that they're coming into every night. So, but the I issue mean, we, we have touched on these things with the Langleys and the Historical Society uh, and you, you're, you're correct. I mean, how do we redo that? We need some money for that, but yeah. we have to go first things first and take little steps, but it will be done. Yeah, and there may be a way to get some help from the Community Preservation Committee as well. They've done things right. in the past like, you know, fund things for like the, the gate study, you know, the historical yeah. nature. There may be a way to yeah, kind several, of mesh that together. Yeah. yeah. yeah there's several um, grants that have been made by CPC regarding cemeteries, but one of the main issues that goes back, to, and Michael touched on it earlier, is it's really an ownership issue. Mm -hmm. You need to understand who owns it before you can come in. Right. That's you know, why I'm wondering if they might be able to help with that, you know, if yeah. there's a way to craft a grant around yeah. that, sort of helping determine ownership or get the land court action yeah. settled. Right. right, it would take land or, per, or perhaps the cost of that somehow reimbursed once it's transferred to the town, or there may be a way to work it out, but it definitely seems like an important site, you know, worth pursuing that. Oh, it is. Mm -hmm. seems like it does belong with the town long term for yeah. maintenance issues and all of that. Just if I can just follow up on that a little bit. One of the people I uh, spoke to about repairing some of the gravestones in that cemetery told me that she had done work that was funded by the CPC in mm -hmm. other towns. So I know it can be done in private cemeteries. Mm -hmm. I know it can be done, but I think part of it is the philosophy of this, mm -hmm. you know, CPC. If you, if you will remember to send me an email, I, I will come back and provide an update on what CPC is funded as it relates okay. to cemeteries. Great. But uh, just a, an email to jog jog me into, into action. I'd suggest, you know, maybe if you're interested, maybe, you know, contact, you know, the chair of the CPC and see if you can just go in front of them and get some more information. I'm sure they sure. could be helpful in some I mean, way. Whatever is, you know, it's, it, it's important. I, I, mm -hmm. I've lived here all my life and it's an important thing to me personally. And I know it was important to uh, Dorothy Langley, Dorothy Clapp, because she was the historian for the Clapp family. Uh, and I've known them all my life. If people want to take a look at some of these um, gravestones, I mean, they're really kind of a little bit heart-wrenching, I think. Yeah. Uh, and, and there are so and, many. And they could uh, be repaired. Cuts? You know, there's so many historical cemeteries around town. It fits nicely with that, you know, maintaining it all for the, the town. The oldest cemetery, the oldest the cemetery in the United States is uh, Meeting House Lane Cemetery. Yes. Well, wow. older than the one on Plymouth Hill. Uh, comments that I would have made have been made. Uh, I think it's important that the agreement be reached on exactly what to do with the cemetery. It sounds like you're well on the way to that. The lines of communication appear to be wide open. That's good. Um, I think it's pretty important that the commercial property and particularly the affordable housing um, sort of uh, requisites of the permit be, be followed through on. I, I know no surprise that the, the town's desperate for affordable housing units and this seems to be um, a very good uh, way to, uh, to help that situation. Uh, and also even the commercial, although the, the market's soft right now, I think our vision of Greenbush and the Driftway is that there'd be a density that would be reached that would, you know, eventually everybody would feed everybody else. I mean, the way you get a thriving village center is to have a variety of uses and have enough different uses to draw people there so that when they're there for one reason, they go to another establishment, perhaps because it's right there, it's convenient, they're motivated, whatever. Um, and and that just kind of everybody feeds uh, feeds on everyone else. So that may be a, a kind of a long-term vision, but we're looking at a substantial piece of development down at the other end of the village. Um, certainly the driftway is right now underdeveloped, if anything, and what's there is not particularly, um, in my mind at least, attractive or sh doesn't show the town off to its, to its best advantage. Um, uh, at least right along the road. Uh, your development is a significant um, exception to that, but you can't really see too much of it as you're driving through. Uh, so I'd like to see that all happen, and I'm glad that uh, I, I would not vote for that to sort of go away from this from this project. Eric? I'm satisfied. Yeah. Uh, I would I would echo the comments of everybody else here, particularly with respect to the uh, 
the mixed use and affordable housing development. I think that's good that you're willing to make a commitment to start at some point in time and get it done. I think it would be very valuable to the town. So, And I think you've done a great job with the development itself. It's great to have another piece of a community built right there. Well, I thank you. Thank you for coming in. Thank you for responding to our questions. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, thank you, board members, and uh, thank you very much. Laura's been very helpful in this whole process. So we'll chew, Laura will continue to work on it. We'll, we'll I'll, I'll make myself available to the extent that, that I'm useful. Michael, it's good to have you as the point person. Well, I'm glad to be here, quite frankly. Okay, good. thank you very thank much. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. And I think a Starbucks at that lo retail location would be amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I just pulled in there. <laughs> That's my little yeah. Starbucks. Starbucks. <laughs> you should get you should get an investment you, group you together and buy a franchise. Yeah. Yeah. They don't do franchises. Oh really? Yeah, I think they're I all company that. owned. One drum, one stick, one Starbucks. See, I'm consistent. <laughs> Cohasset is close enough. <laughs> That's a long way down there. It is. <laughs> Four miles. What can we do, we do to lure, got two, lure We've the got Starbucks two ice, ice machines. Why can't we have two, two Starbucks? Okay. Okay. I think that was time well spent. Uh, next item on the agenda is a public hearing for accessory dwelling special permit for 5 3rd Avenue. Uh, why don't you come up, introduce yourself, tell us what you're looking to do. Is that an AU bag? It is an AU bag. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, 2009 maybe? <laughs> it's been a while. The economy hasn't been friendly to us to make that trip. Um, my name is Jason Costello. I'm part owner at the House 5 3rd Ave. Uh, I'm representing both my family, Costello, and the Divisio family. Um, what we're looking to do is expand the existing uh, in-law accessory dwelling uh, at the residence. Um, as a part of that expansion, we're also fitting out the third floor, um, which is an existing shelled space. Um, I think it's referred to on the, the prior drawings as the, the attic space. Um, that is or primarily the extent of the renovations. There's uh, one exterior modification, which is the addition of a second means of egress from the second floor. Uh, in the existing den, um, which has been worked out and discussed with the building inspector uh, in a preliminary review of the plans to, to make sure there was nothing uh, that stood out from him from a life safety or building code uh, issue with the plan. Um, Laura brought to my attention that there was some conflict uh, in the areas. I went back and took a look um, at the Kaiser documents, and I may have the I think there's several sets of documents from the Kaiser um, Industries. The documents in the name of the actual, it's a 28 by 43 uh, custom colonial single family dwelling. Uh, on their plan, they actually dimension it as 43 feet long, uh, 27, four and three quarter. This is proposed, this is existing. This was originally built as a um, modular home. Okay. But this is an existing in-law apartment, essentially. Correct, yes. And you're, you're looking to expand it to take the whole About first floor? About three quarters of the first floor, yes. Three quarters? Approximately. It's probably a little bit more than that. Yeah, the this one shows that pretty good. Shows the existing and shows the. Proposed. We're maintaining the existing stair and basically a foyer um, at the front door for the primary residence or the primary dwelling, uh, which is the bottom okay. right here. corner. This one right here. Right, right, right here. Yeah. Okay. Oh, so that's so, not part of the addition. This section yeah. right here. And, and what they're doing is they're going to repurpose the existing yeah. structure. Um, I did run the number both ways. We actually took a tape out uh, just to verify. It actually is 48, or sorry, 43 by 28 uh, in contradiction to the drawings. Um, I revised the uh, areas briefly to look at it, and basically that extra eight inches is along the width, 
and what happens is it just proportionally pumps the areas up. So I have revised, uh, have a revised A0-1 with the updated areas for accommodating that additional eight uh, inches uh, if the board would like them. So it's still below the required percentage? Uh, right. It, basically, the percentage actually, let's see if it improves. Yeah, it's point three six five eight now instead of three point three six six three. So it actually Sorry, say that again. Uh, it's point three six five eight with okay. the updated dimensions. But it's well within it's, it's still within the bylaw. It is within the bylaw, yep. correct. Not including any, any basement space in any of these calculations, right? There is a fit out of a portion of the basement. Uh, okay. That was my question as well. Is that actually habitable space per um, the building code? We have the ceiling height as well as access to exterior windows um, as attic windows uh, within that space. The windows are actually omitted from the plan. I apologize about that. Um, but there are two windows within that space. <coughs> curve that space. Okay. In the basement. In the basement. Correct, yes. Yep, that's, that's, that's the uh, proposed rec room. Yes, that's on a two dash B. And in reviewing that, miss that. <laughs> should be the third page of the two one. That's ATP. Too many pieces. Of oh, paper. maybe. Mm -hmm. Really, first ATP floor, second ATP. floor, and mm -hmm. I don't have a basement <laughs> plan. <as well>. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. And again, that was reviewed okay. with. Yes. Um, I believe it's Neil in the building department, and he was comfortable with the second means of egress through the. Um, oh yeah, sorry. Yep. Out of order. Through the other basement space, provided that we, you know, met with the fire department and had the appropriate smoke detectors and. Um, is that a bulkhead safety. or something off the back? It is a bulkhead. Yes. Floor. Um. Looking through this, it was a little hard to put the numbers together, and I called um, Mr. Costello, and we kind of went through it. The assessors agree with with your measurement of okay. the uh, 28 by 43 for the the footprint of the building. So, you know, that doesn't seem to be at issue with any of the information that, that we have and that the board has. Well, actually it is because the, the dimensions that the board has is a... Well, well we didn't really use everything oh. on your plan because it just, you know, that there were a lot of discrepancies within it. But I'm sorry, I didn't mean no. to interrupt you. No, that's all right. I'm just saying that there's a, that eight inch discrepancy between the plans that were submitted to the board and what registers with the assessors and what actually, the, you know, we went out and put a tape to versus what was kind of on the existing drawings that we had received. So, um, you know, based on the numbers that, that he's provided, it does look like it's 36%, um, which is under the 40. So it, it looks like everything is, is fine. Um, if you, you know, want to be careful about it, you know, I suppose you could hold back on the certificate of occupancy until all the space is constructed in the, um, you know, the rec room and the upstairs space. Um, originally, that upstairs was going to be storage. I don't know if you remember, yep. but mm -hmm. yeah. Um, you know, who wants to use the third floor with a water view as storage? So, um, so yeah, it's, it's not certainly not storage. Not designed or built for storage. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it has a shed dormer. I mean, it, you know, it doesn't look like storage. Um, yeah, he's actually, the prior storage. owner had piped. There's, you know, Heating pipes capped just below the floor, as well as you know, water drainage uh, for a potential sink or wet bar, it appears like, mm -hmm. um, in the as builds. I, I actually was up there when he was in there, and, and uh, it was a party room. There was a pool <laughs> table there and a bunch of other stuff. Now, why they would you want to change the, that? <laughs> just storing the pool table. Yes, there. they're storing the pool table there. There was also a telescope, as I recall, to uh, admire the ocean view. <laughs> and a nice, I think he has a little man room up there, too, for yeah. the flat screen TV and a couple of couches. You lost that one? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I don't really have any questions. It seems like uh, the numbers make sense. Yeah. I think, you know, my only concern is that we're consistent, you know, with the uh, 
the measurement of the space and the habitable area that it's actually done. So I, I like Laura's suggestion of holding back the CO until it's actually done. I know we've had that issue before with attic space and basement space and mm -hmm. um, you know to count it towards the square footage it has to actually be habitable so mm -hmm. it can't just be you know slapping up drywall in a basement with no windows and no fire um, egress and all of that so just to stay consistent with how we've interpreted that in the past so I, I think with that I mean if we put that condition on it okay. it just ensures that you actually are going to build what you're showing yeah <laughs> I'm fine. Uh, I'm glad I don't have to carry groceries up to that third floor kitchen. <laughs> I don't know if there's any reason to disallow it because of that. No. <laughs> exercise. Good exercise. Right. Obesity campaign. I get plenty of exercise. Yeah. I'm actually a neighbor. Uh huh. Um, you should recuse yourself. I probably should. <laughs> Are you within um, the 300 feet? I was curious as to how far the actual. You, you see, feet you see the, the on the uh, on the plat map here. You're the the, uh, the, 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 the Coleman's right here. Yeah. I live next door. Yeah. So. Uh, so I I will not express any opinion other than. I I, I did happen to see the uh, the former, uh, which I believe was a low-income it was an affordable yeah affordable housing thing mm -hmm. and I happened to be in there and looked at that and it wasn't big enough for anybody to live at mm -hmm. um, and I, I seem to recall it went up as a as a means to get the building built quickly uh, with, with that uh, de uh, designation it looks fine to me Steve? yeah I'm fine with it too as long as it matches the you know meets the requirements for the square footage I think that's fine and I, I, I like the idea of making sure it all gets done yeah, I think that's a valid point it also obviates a problem that I had when it was originally proposed as an affordable unit it was extremely small mm. the question I always had in my mind is that you had that whole first floor why not utilize that and expand it even if it was 150 feet as opposed to even you know for what you're doing now um, so I think intuitively this makes a lot more sense than what was originally proposed which leads me to the motion do person. A do we motion? have a motion? Do I, I need to add the? I have to add something at the end <clears throat> about um, that the CFO shall be. Um, oh, before we do that, yeah. any other questions from the public? Sure, Barbara. Okay. I mean, I Thank wonder, you. Well, before that, I'd like to just enter these. These have the updated square footages. That way, okay. they're on. There's six copies. If you need additional copies, I can make six. Mm. Additional copies. So, what's what's the total square footage then? Uh, so the so it's uh, one thousand nineteen. So instead of nine ninety five, is that what you're saying? Yeah, it's one thousand nineteen. But the total square footage is larger too, right? And yeah. then what's the new? What's the oh, new wait, I guess no from four twenty four. Uh, 2786. Oh, that's the primary right. dwelling total. Is okay. 27. Oh, oh that's, that's what you related to. Yeah, actually, if you could just give me one copy, I can give you a total. Yeah, I think they were confused about that on the, on the first um, the first Yeah, yeah I probably could have, the chart could have been a little bit better. Well, wait, oh, right here. So 2786, is that what they said? The, the area of the facility. So, so Laura, what's the total? Actually, the biggest problem with the uh, so the primary is twenty. The former accessory dwelling okay, is it made this kitchen just completely unusable. Does not include this or that. So this is just this the calculation. Be, so that's the normal base. One thousand. Yeah, the kitchen is right. the kitchen is right here now. So the yeah. that's the way. This it was what it was. Oh, okay. Yeah, this was this was a uh, accessory yeah. dwelling yeah. that's an yeah. affordable yeah. unit. Yeah. Is what it was. Mm -hmm. And it's just too small. Yeah. And it makes the kitchen too small. Yeah. I mean, I'd put a dumb waiter in. I seriously would. Oh yeah. We're good. Okay. Uh, I'm really bad. Yes. Flipped it up so that the, you know your kitchen's done in the bedroom. Yeah. Only for the additional condition if yeah. it's just something yeah. to the effect of the COs will be issued simultaneously or something like that, and they'll need one for both, right? Yeah. Or you know, if if you want to say one before the other, and then um, if it happens that yeah, you know, simultaneously true. doesn't really work so well. Well, the CO for the primary first, then. Yeah. 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 So the numbers, you get the numbers straight? I think so. Yeah, yeah, he's good with the numbers. Um, it's 37%, so it's still under 40. It's just 
one little percent higher. Mm -hmm. And we're working on a motion as we speak. Okay. This is a long motion. So I move to make the following findings of fact. Number one, on January 13th, 2005, the Planning Board approved a site plan administrative review authorizing construction of an affordable accessory dwelling at 5 3rd Avenue. On January 12th, 2012, the Planning Board approved an accessory dwelling special permit for the property, removing the affordable restriction. The accessory and primary dwelling footprints are the same as originally permitted. Number two, on August 7, 2012, new owners submitted an application for an accessory dwelling special permit to increase the size of the accessory and primary dwelling units. The applicants proposed to make the accessory dwelling unit 1,019 square foot up or from 424 square feet. The accessory unit would be the entire first floor and contain one bedroom. The applicants proposed to finish the vacant third floor with a kitchen and living room for the primary dwelling. The primary dwelling will have three bedrooms on the second floor and an exterior staircase would be added from the office area to the outside to provide for a secondary means of egress. 287 square feet of the basement is proposed to be finished for a recreation room. Is that number still okay? Mm. Sorry. 294. Two, yeah, okay, good. So I'm sorry, amend. 294, 294 square feet of the basement is proposed to before a finished recreation room. Number three, the plans submitted with the application are entitled Costello uh, Dionisio, 5 3rd Avenue, Sheet A0-1, Area Plans, Sheet A2-B, Basement Floor Plan, Sheet A2-1, First Floor Plan, Sheet A2-2, Second Floor, Sheet A2-3, Third Floor, and Sheet A4-1, Exterior Elevations. All sheets are undated with no preparer information given. Also submitted were the floor plans of the existing dwelling, A1, first floor, A2, second floor, and A2.1, attic plan, for the Nadau residence dated 12-7-2004, prepared by the Sandcastle Group, 600 Plain Street, Marshfield, Mass. Number four. The area of the proposed accessory dwelling will be 1,019 square feet. The area of the primary dwelling will be 2,786 square feet. The area of the proposed accessory dwelling is less than 40% of the area of the primary dwelling, so the area meets the requirements of 530.2F for accessory dwellings. Number five, an excerpt from a site plan for 5-3rd Avenue shows an 18 uh, foot to 20 foot wide driveway and approximately 22 foot wide garage on this on the property this appears adequate to provide two parking spaces for the accessory dwelling and ample parking for the primary dwelling number six the applicants have agreed that they are the owners and occupy the property number seven the application meets the standards of situate zoning bylaw section 530 for an accessory dwelling special permit and then you need to vote the finding of facts yeah, that's yeah. the. Yeah. the yeah. I need a motion to vote the. F I move that we accept the findings of fact. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, so we're good? good? All right. And this doesn't have any square footages on it, right? No, okay. All right, so I move to, pro to approve the accessory dwelling special permit for 5 3rd Avenue with the following conditions. Number one, the applicant shall meet all the requirements of the building department, the Board of Health, Department of Public Works, Fire Department, Water Department, and other town agencies. Number two, the property at 5 3rd Avenue shall contain a maximum of two dwelling units, the existing dwelling and the accessory dwelling as proposed. The footprint, number of bedrooms, and or square footage shall not be increased without prior approval of the planning board. Number three, the owners of the property shall reside on the property as long as it contains an accessory dwelling unit. The owners of the property shall provide yearly certificate, certifications, <laughs> certifications excuse me, on October 1st of every year that they are residing on the property. Number four, except for any changes necessary to meet these conditions, any construction shall conform to the area plans, basement floor plan, first, basement floor plan, first floor plan, second floor, third floor, and exterior elevations 
for Costello Dionisio, 5 3rd Avenue submitted with this application. Number five, no on-street parking shall be permitted. Number six, this special permit shall be void if it is not recorded at the Registry of Deeds within 90 days of the date of filing with the town clerk. The owner shall provide proof of this recording to the planning board. Number seven, this special permit shall lapse within two years from the date of its issuance unless substantial use or construction has commenced prior to that time in accordance with MGL Chapter 40A, Section 9. Number eight, this special permit shall terminate if the use is not in accordance with this decision and conditions. And number nine, oops, the certificate of occupancy for the primary um, dwelling shall be at the uh, completion of... Do you want to try the other way around with the certificate of occupancy for the, yeah. for the unit and say that that one... Um, yeah, I think maybe you say that yeah, no certificate that of occupancy one shall not be the, issued until the, the accessory shall be issued until of occupancy is obtained for the certificate the of occupancy for the primary dwelling has been issued. Okay. So number nine, a certificate of occupancy for the accessory dwelling oh, shall not. Can I just interrupt for a question? Oh. I'm just the sequencing's a little bit complicated because we're bringing things up through it. So I'd like a little bit of flexibility in terms of the C of O. I, I agree completely with the understanding. I just like a little flexibility in the timing of which actually gets its CO first. It's not the construction. You can do the construction okay. in any sequence. It's just the CO okay. lets you occupy it. So, right. Yeah. So, number nine, the certificate of occupancy for the accessory dwelling shall be. Um, uh, but shall not be issued until. Shall not be issued until the certificate of occupancy for the primary dwelling yeah. obtained. is obtained. Yeah. A uh, second. Discussion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 You got a vote. Set. You got a decision, and it will be filed with the town clerk <laughs> shortly. Do you want this? This has all the <laughs> I, I early, really, early next week. No if not, if not tomorrow. Okay. We'll so work on we, tomorrow. And then there's after a 20 the twenty-one day, day appeal period. period. And then we would take it to Plymouth. Right. right. Thank you very much. Yep. Right. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. And Laura, thank you for your help. Oh, sure. Okay, okay so we're almost back on schedule. Uh, <laughs> I'm to sign this and pass it to you. Are, you. are you rested, Richard? Okay, <laughs> yeah, I'm rested. <laughs> well, I mean, the, the next two items are critical and they're yours. We've actually done those. You've done those. Oh, mm hmm. Oh. Then they're less critical than I thought. Thought you got here. Uh, how about liaison reports? Did we do that? No. 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 Okay. Uh, who wants to start off? Any, any liaison reports? Well, unfortunately, the South Shore Coalition is meeting tonight, so I was unable to attend that. <laughs> You're going to give me this limitation of only being at one place and one time? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I did actually talk to Laura about it, see which one was more important. Um, let's see, I can give you, CPC has had a couple of meetings so far. Uh, for those that are familiar with the CPC website, um, and where you go on the landing page and then you go off to the application, it's a tremendous amount of documentation, but it's somewhat convoluted as you flow through the thing. And the existing application that we had does not reflect all the changes that the state made in terms of CPC. So the application now is being updated um, and will be on the website. If it's not now, it will be done shortly. So you'll have a new application on it. And if you haven't um, gone to that website, I think it's, it's, a, it's a good website to go to and it may answer the question that I agreed to answer. And that is the, the question on well, what part of the CPC is voted for cemeteries. So they will continue to do that. The second item I've got is, is uh, has to do with the Board of Selectmen at the 2nd of October, is that the right date? Um, the Board of Selectmen, at, no, let me step back. At the previous meeting of the Board of Selectmen, uh, they raised the question as to whether the uh, water resource and the overlay district change should go in front of the, the town in terms of the special town meeting. There seemed to be some confusion as to which was the multi-page document. 
and Laura, you and I will be there on the second to come back up and clarify that. Yep. And I think it's our position um, is that both of those articles, given the importance of the overlay district, as well as this, um, the water resource, is both of those should go forward at the uh, special town meeting. And we'll make a recommendation to that effect and hopefully they will concur. That's what I've been doing in my spare time. <laughs> Uh, I have nothing to report, but I do want to say I'm definitely planning to go to the Waterways Commission meeting um, first Wednesday in October, whenever that turns out to be. Uh, so I, I'm going to start making a regular t attempt to do that, and uh, we'll report back to the board then our first meeting in October. So, anything else? One thought. Um, now that Stephen has joined us, I'm wondering if we should talk about liaison assignments and if he is interested sure, or anyone is interested want to get in of? getting help. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm actually good. I have a light load, but I know, Bill, you're listed probably 10 times on this list, so I don't know if I think uh, a list. You know, if there's anything that interests you in particular, let us know. I'm sure you could either replace somebody or you could join in, in addition to somebody on any of these that, mm -hmm. that you might be interested in. Yeah, well, I, I, I had expressed interest in the past in the public facilities master plan, um, you know, just participating in that process. So that would be one that I'd be interested in. And maybe it's a, a question of just co-participating, if you will. Yeah, I, I guess on that one, we had to designate a single person from the planning board. So we Is that designated right? Bill already. Uh, we have like okay. one official representative, but I think they'll all be open meeting types of meetings, mm -hmm. I don't think there's any reason, you know, all of us yeah. Yeah. could attend it if we wanted to. I've got to get a signature like that. That like one it. in particular yeah, is, the it story is a formed signature. committee, you know, with representatives from different boards. About mm -hmm. 10 years ago, I... Where the other ones are more informal, you just, uh, you know, act as a liaison, go to the meetings when you can, and you're the communication point back to the planning board for them. Yeah, yeah why don't you let me take a look at yeah. it? Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah. on, on the Public Building Commission, I don't know if there's actually been any meetings recently that I'm aware of. They, they actually have been meeting. They're um, starting to meet to figure out how they're going to be involved with this public um, facilities master plan. So I'm saying that might be something for Steve if he wants to, because I have not, you know, I've been dropping the ball on that. We'll, we'll take a look at them. Don't, yeah. Don't I mean, need to put you on the spot right now. I mean, we have time make sure to. sure I understand what they do. Yeah, look at the town <laughs> website and figure out who's on them and what they're doing. And Your list. Did I get that too? Was that in the package? Okay, we had to tell that list report. in the package. Uh, it came in the package for yeah, you. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Not really. Um, no, not really. Um, oh, I was supposed you to be putting say, that together while I, you, you know, the whole yeah. rest of the you meeting was yes going on. Go yeah, it was, it was fantastic. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think I'll say yes. Um, you all got this letter from um, Ken Duval's attorney, and this is going to go on next meeting. Uh, this is that. Uh, possible street. stormwater uh, permit, possible, yep. possible nothing at all that you know, mm -hmm. we had talked about. Yeah, is he going to come in front of us next meeting? Is that the plan? Yeah. Or? Okay. Yep. Um, I mean, he's not um, asking for a permit. He's asking for a decision on whether he has to ask for a permit. Yeah, yeah I look through it pretty closely, and I tend to disagree a little bit with Wouldn't the ask that attorney's question. interpretation. So, but that said, we'll have to talk about that. It'll be interesting. I, I think. I mean, just so everybody knows, I think my view comes down to the answer to whether they have created more impervious surface or not. It's not the other arguments he makes about whether it's a development or not. I think it clearly yeah. is under definitions of alteration and other things in the intent. But but it does come down to it's only jurisdictional if it creates uh, more impervious surface than what was there before. So you're, an impervious surface is a defined term to a certain extent. Mm -hmm. So you're talking about you know tree removal, and now if it's just bare land, what effect did that have on that? Um, certainly has an effect, but under it's his interpretation of it, you could clear cut 100 acres and situate and not be subject to the stormwater bylaw, yeah. which I don't think is the intent, and I don't read it yeah. that way. I mean, the effect is, is it's impervious is the obvious one, but in fact, what happens when you cut trees and take the sort of forest floor cover off an area and leave it bare, um, the runoff is increased. It's yes. the, the speed of the runoff is, is definitely increased and less water sinks into the soil. So, yeah. in fact, you've made that patch of land less pervious than it used to be. Mm -hmm. 
it's sort of a definitional argument he's making under the stormwater bylaw, you know, which we've run into that before where, you know, the statutes or bylaws aren't always exactly how you'd want them to read, yeah. but I think there's room within that to interpret it that, you know, this is something we should be looking at. Um, well, if nothing else, maybe it's going to point out the need for some tweaks to that bylaw. I mean, yeah, that bylaw I think in was, either case, it would be a good mm -hmm. idea to make some tweaks. I still think that it's jurisdictional the way it's drafted now, but I think it could be a little clearer. Yeah. Are there any existing precedents where we've run across the same situation? Um, probably, yeah. I'm, I'm going to go mm -hmm. look through the, the permits yeah. that have been no, issued. Jump out at me. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's hard to think of all of them, but... Um, I mean, one of his main arguments is he's going to create impervious surface, but it's going to be a while in the future, and it's not going to be in this exact place, and so on. So um, it sounds like maybe a loophole that needs to be closed up. Yeah, well, I, I, you know, we can talk about it with him when he's here, but yeah. I think in my view it still falls within the stormwater bylaw. Well, N Neil Duggan felt the same way that, yeah. that you do. He, th he thought... Yeah, that but it, it really should be within the stormwater. But I, but I do think that we, you know, give the opportunity to people to make a lot of arguments based on some of our language could be a little better in the bylaw than it is. So. That's that's the way I come down. On. I yeah. I understand that, that where we should have jurisdiction on it, but I'm not so sure that that I agree that we do. Mm -hmm. the st this language in the st state laws that govern stuff like this that talks about rate of runoff too, though. Not just pervious versus impervious, but you can't increase the rate of runoff. Yes, our language I says you have to do two things. You have to have increased the impervious area, and you have to affect on-site or off-site drainage. So you have to have both of them. And yeah. Clearly, it affects on-site, off-site. So when I went through all his definitional arguments, I didn't agree with anything, but then I got down to impervious area, which I don't think he even raised, but that's, that's the definition. It, issue right there. Mm -hmm. Did it yeah. increase the impervious area or not? Yeah. So clearly, and it gives examples under the definition, clearly, you know, pavement. Right. It even goes so far as to give examples of including, but not limited to, like a, a dirt road or something, a gravel road, mm -hmm. you, know, mm -hmm. you know, or even compacted soil, mm -hmm. something like that. But it doesn't go far to, so say far just to say trees. if yeah. you alter landscaping, that's considered jurisdictional. So there's a little bit of a, you know, potentially right interpretational issue or argument there that I don't like the way it's drafted, but I still come down on that it's jurisdictional for us to look at it, so. Yeah, I see that. And um, just one other thing, that is, I think, um, is it the next meeting or the meeting after when we're gonna talk about the subdivision regulations? The 25th, October 25th. The 25th, okay, it's uh, another couple meetings. We had, uh, Karen and I have both been doing a lot of work on the subdivision regulations, finding you know, little things that need to be fixed, and also looking at updating the fee schedule because the fees that we're charging seem to be a bit lower than other towns around us. And, you know, not that you want to stick it to people, but you want to kind of keep up with everyone else and, um, you know, keep our, you know, the revenue that we should be getting coming in. So we're going to talk about all those things, or you know, I'll talk about them in another couple of weeks. Well, and even as we've talked about before, even with the fees, even if we raise them, they still really don't cover our real costs. Oh no, they. It's they easy to say copying don't. things yeah. like that, but you know, costs of you know town planner employees looking, you know, that's not yeah. even doesn't no, scratch the surface of covering those costs. So I hope to do that. It's really. not like it's a profit center. It's just yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, the real cost yeah. is the opportunity cost. You can be doing something else. Yeah. <laughs> Lost opportunity cost. Yeah, I factor that in. And you know, I mean, I've, I've discovered that Richard can only be in one place and do one thing. It, Isn't that amazing? You know. <laughs> How limiting. Thank God, I know. Thank, thank God that doesn't apply to the planning. Can't you, can't you do FaceTime on that thing? <laughs> yeah, I could have been there, actually. And you know what? That's uh, now a new, uh, what do you want to call it? Like, a, not a requirement, but a new ability that we can actually come to this meeting remotely through that's FaceTime. True. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. authorized now. Yeah. Mm. Yep. Is that right? Yeah. You can participate remotely. <laughs> I don't think it's authorized. The capability exists until the selectman do it. Yeah, I'm not sure how oh, we get that to adopt ability. Yeah. Yeah. That could be. The selectman do have to vote. No, oh, I thought that it came yeah. up, though. This, did the state well, make so it an the option? The state maybe made the it an option. Okay. Oh, okay. Because yeah, okay. I know other towns have it already. Is that right? Yeah. So, all right. okay. so, so Bob has a motion. I do. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Oh, 
Stephen, the standing motion is to well, adjourn. He is the person to adjourn. Uh, I kind of figured that. Yeah, yeah I lost. I lost. Somebody has to pull the plug, and it's me.